We are now ready to render this scene. Uh, so what we're going to do is render the 3D um, and then we will use After Effects to put it together with the original footage. Now it's true that Blender does have a compositor. It even has a compositor with a green screen. Um, and you, you could use that, but the scope of that is kind of outside of this tutorial. Uh, since uh, I, I feel like most people watching this tutorial will have uh, access to After Effects, you know, it would, it would be, you just can't hardly do it in good conscious, conscience uh, in, in Blender because Blender's compositor is uh, pretty lacking when you have After Effects and specifically it's uh, keyer. Uh, and the, the, the key light keyer in After Effects is pretty amazing. So it's just uh, really a lot easier to do it that way. And uh, if you are curious about the compositor in Blender, uh, good for very many things, but not necessarily keying, you can look up those tutorials. All right, so um, first thing then, because this is going to be our stand-in for our, uh, our woman, we want that out of the scene and out of the render. Um, in fact, let's just uh, check this out. If we render an image right now, uh, you go to your properties panel and click on the little camera, and then we're going to click render image. And it takes a second to render that. While it's doing that, I'm going to um, show that in the dimensions here, what you will probably want to do is reduce your resolution to something like, you know, 50%, 35%. Uh, because it's just not going to go fast enough if you have it at full res at 1080p. Now, uh, so there are a couple of issues here. Um, one is that uh, we have this big black cylinder, and we need to get rid of that. That's the stand-in for our actress. Uh, the most obvious is that the whole scene is too dim. We need better lighting. And uh, then also uh, this uh, photo that should be over here uh, is not, it's not on the wall. And so uh, we're going to solve those in reverse order. First of all, we're going to get that photo on the wall. And uh, this is to say that sometimes you may have a, a texture that doesn't import with the object. Let's go back here, switch to 3D view. And we can uh, select that poster with uh, the right click. Actually, I'm really not sure if it's supposed to be a poster or like a emulated window um, because the uh, the image is sort of of an outside scene. Um, but what you do then is click on the material after selecting that. You'll see that the uh, material is supposed to be set to just be this JPEG image. So what we can do is um, figure out why that's not working. And it's actually not in the materials panel specifically, but to the next panel, the textures panel, where we would set that image. So here we can uh, fix this up. And there it is under the image panel. If we twirl all this stuff up, it's a little bit easier to see. but. There it is in the image section. And um, the source here, if we reload it. Um, okay, well, anyway, it says can't load image there. Let's click on that. Um, I'm going to surf over to my desktop. Click in there. And then uh, the bank textures. And then that's the one I'm looking for there. So I'll hit accept. And uh, that's going to put it into the scene. Um, next, the lighting. Okay, so there's going to be, a, you, you could look up an entire tutorial on lighting. Um, in our inspector outline, you can see we have most of these things are uh, meshes that uh, make up the three dimensional objects, but we also have lights. And in the scene, the, the lights are these little globes, like that one there that one there. So those little balls of light are 
those, those lamps. Okay, so one thing you can do is come to your properties panel, click on the lamp properties, and um, you can change the style of, of lamp from area to spot to point to uh, Hemi. Uh, you can change the color of the lamp, uh, for example. Uh, you know, just for fun, let's uh, take this lamp here and set that to a uh, pretty hard pink. And we'll just see if we get some of the... These these are all pretty low energy right now, 0 0.03. I'll increase that to 0 0.1 something. And so you can adjust the lighting using all the lamps that are in the scene. We imported those from the uh, bank.blend file, remember. Okay, so um, there's that. And then most importantly, if we click on the world in the properties inspector, um, we can see that uh, it's using three different types of lighting. Well, it's not using indirect lighting, um, and it should be probably. Uh, environmental lighting is set really low. So if we set this up to probably probably even 0.9 would be uh, acceptable. Uh, we can do a test at that. Let's just set it to 1 just to be even. And uh, then the last thing was getting the cylinder out of the scene. So to uh, hide something from the scene, here it is in the uh, outliner, we, we could click on that and that hides or shows it in the scene. But to get it to not render, what we have to do is click on this restrict renderability icon. Click there and it disappears from the render. Okay, so I'm gonna click on that camera again, click on render image, and let's see if we get some better results this time. Yeah, and you can see already that that's a, a much better result. Um, a little bit pixelated because we're at 35% resolution, but uh, it looks fairly usable. Um, and the poster is going to show up over here, I hope. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's got to be a poster, right? It's kind of sticking off the wall. Um, okay, so that is um, how how you how you do it. And what we're what we've been rendering there is an image. So we want to render obviously an animation. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set that preset resolution all the way back up to one hundred percent. Uh next thing and then I'm gonna twirl this up. Oh well you do wanna make sure that it's at twenty four frames per second which is what this was recorded at. Twirl it up. Um, and it doesn't hurt to do a shorter scene uh, than 215 frames to test this out, just to get a few frames to test to make sure it's looking good. Um, output is the most important one then. And you can set this output to output wherever you want to. I am going to actually set it to just go to my desktop, okay, and I'll click accept on that then, and uh, you can set the compression to whatever quality you'd like, and I'm going to go ahead and just make this a uh, H.264 um, format, and that's going to be... Uh, it's going to be okay. Uh, you, you might want to do an image sequence um, to kind of match up with exactly with what uh, they did. But uh, I'm going to, for this, uh, for our purposes here, do just H.264. And you can also check out the encoding, um, the format here, H.264. You can try lossless output. Okay, everything else is going to look pretty good. We can actually set this to QuickTime, I think. 
Let's just do that. Uh, let's do a uh, QuickTime JPEG. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out what would be the m m quickest for this tutorial, but then, then also, you know. Um, yeah, let's just do uh, the output as QuickTime. That'll be good. Okay, save that. And now I'm going to hit animation render. Uh, it's going to start rendering, and uh, this will take a while. So you can go have some coffee or whatnot. I'll see you back in a little while.